Hi guys and welcome back to our channel. Today this is the most exciting video of the year. It is our trend predictions for 2023. This is not just based on what I think, what I like, it's based on what I'm seeing emerge in the industry, what the suppliers are doing. And these trade shows that we go to, they're predicting the trends for the next five years. So a lot of work has gone into this and I'm really excited to share it with you. So let's get started. Okay, so first up, this for me is the biggest trend that I'm seeing emerge in interiors. We've been implementing it in our projects. I saw a lot of pieces of furniture that had this trend when I was in Paris as well. And it's the trend of organic shapes. What do I mean by organic shapes? It's not just about a circular coffee table. We were seeing coffee tables that were kind of impossible shapes to describe. It had lots of rounded edges. It was very fluid. And there was dining tables that followed the same pattern, upholstery pieces like sofas. Designers and manufacturers are really pushing the boundaries of what kind of shapes and styles they're offering. And these organic shapes are such a welcome addition to any room. You know, we live in houses that are very boxy. There's lots of lines. Anything we can do that breaks up all that harshness, that adds some curves, really is a great thing to do in your home. And um, so I've got some examples from our portfolio. I'm also gonna share some of those pieces that I saw in Paris. But first up, let's look at this project that we designed back in 2022. Now this is a living room we designed for a bachelor. It was such a fun project to work on. Again, perfect example, this was a new build development in Chelsea. Everything was very linear and we just wanted to soften it a little bit. So the main organic shape that you see in here is this coffee table with Ottomans that we designed. The client had a very specific um, brief for us, which was that he wanted a coffee table, but he really wanted to relax and enjoy the space. He wants to be able to pull these Ottomans out. If you look up closely, they've got a little handle and use them as a footstool. We really didn't want to go for you know, a typical coffee table. So we designed on paper these shapes. We even tried them in situ just to make sure that they worked. And they're so organic. And I really love the fact that they sort of aid the space and the flow of traffic around the space. You know, it's not the biggest living room in the world, but when you soften and curve those edges, it just makes it a bit more gentle on your senses that you feel like you can easily circulate around the room. The next example I really wanted to share with you guys was this incredible project. So many of you asked me, are we going to do a video tour of this project? It was insane and it broke my heart, but the client really kindly let us do a photo shoot. We worked on this project for, I think, four or five years. Anthony, my team, was the lead designer and we poured our heart and soul into this project. But this client agreement was long before we ever had a YouTube channel and I just didn't feel comfortable even asking the question if we could film. Um, so we're just going to have to make do with photos, but I'm excited to share some more of the photos and I will share more of the photos with you guys. Um, but this room in particular, this is in the basement and they had their own spa complex, which was just insane, better than any hotel I've ever seen. And in this lobby area, before you walk through the doors to the swimming pool, we wanted to furnish it, it was kind of like a receiving room and it follows through from the main entrance hall above. So um, in the corner, we have this very soft, organic, curved sofa, which is really intentional because we knew we wanted to have it at an angle. And that's the great thing about this organic furniture is it kind of breaks up how you have to plot the furniture. You know, whenever we're designing a room, we plot the furniture onto a floor plan. And, you know, if you have like a square sofa like this, it would be weird to have this at a diagonal angle. But suddenly when you're working with organic shapes, it throws everything up in the air. You can have it in a corner, you can have it however you want. And I think it's a really exciting development in design, something that I'm loving to embrace. Um, this also works really well because it leads through to the pool and we wanted those soft organic shapes. And um, because it's a basement, it doesn't have any um, windows, um, but we're still trying to bring the outside in through the olive tree behind the sofa, even the bas relief, um, artwork that goes up the staircase, that's an olive tree, and then the green that we've used in the sofa. Um, so all these organic shapes, it really echoes back to nature, and I think that's another reason why I love them so much. This was the project that we finished in Portugal. Um, I'm sure Ollie will put a little button that you can click if you haven't seen it. That was an amazing project to work on, awesome video. We loved filming that one. Crazy deadline. We were filming whilst installing, whilst finishing the building work, but go and see it if you haven't seen it already. Again, here, the brief from the client was they wanted this project to feel very earthy and organic, and that naturally lent itself through to these organic shapes. So you're seeing the curved sofa, the round coffee table, the round side table, the round chandeliers, they're the same ones we used in Chelsea, the oval dining table, everything is very soft, and that's because this is a new build. There wasn't that much interest in this room. It was very boxy, and we were trying to sort of counteract that with the shapes of the furniture that we installed. Obviously, I'm loving because I've designed it, and 
finally it's launched is our new Grove Collection handles with Armac Martin. And again, they're a perfect example of those organic shapes. It was very much inspired by the bamboo shape. It's something that's really soft and lovely to touch. It's very tactile and that's really important with handles is that they need to feel good when you touch them. But I think it's a great way if you've got all your built-in joinery or you've got your kitchen or your wardrobes and you can't change those. By changing the handle, you can add some softness and that's really what we wanted to achieve with this handle is Armac Martin is my go-to supply of handles, not just because I've got a collection with them, but I've just always loved working with them. They've got great quality, the materials and the color selection is great. But I said to them when we designed this collection was I wanted something that was softer and felt more organic because that was completely different from what they already had and that was important to me. So I'm really happy with how that turned out and I've used them in Ava's, Ava's bedroom. We've got them specified in kitchen. So I'm really excited to see lots more examples of using those in situ. Next up, let's talk about Marvel. Marvel obviously has been around forever. This is not cutting edge news. Tell me something I don't know. What I want to say about Marvel is I've never seen more bold Marvel than I've seen in pieces of furniture at Maison L'Objet in Paris. All the suppliers are really embracing this trend. It's something you're going to see coming through into the high street, if not already. And in our projects, we're using Marvel more than ever. And we're using it in unusual ways. So this example here, we came up with this idea of doing the Marvel shelves in the study and it just took it up a level. Like this is obviously like top, top end, super uber luxury, not necessarily achievable for everyone, but it's something that you can take inspiration from and see how you can use marble in different ways. And for me, I think it works so well, not only because it brings in another material and breaks up all the wood, but I love the fact that we match the color of the marble to the fireplace. So again, those all tying together, and it feels cohesive. The next trend, and this is a trend that we've been embracing for years, but I was actually surprised when I watched back last year's video that I hadn't mentioned it last year, I obviously ran out of time. It is textured art. All of our clients love textured art. I love textured art. It's such a um, soothing, calming thing to have in your room. You know, it can completely change by the light of the day. When you have your evening light on, it becomes a lot more dramatic. During the day, it becomes a bit more soothing and, and sort of fades into the background. And I wanted to share with you some different examples from our projects that we've done. So first up, we have this project in Mayfair. And this piece of art we had above the dining table, we knew that we needed something very big. We knew that we wanted something that had light integrated into it. And so this was the perfect solution. These are um, metal desks that are then in different colors. So they're white, black, bronze, and you can put them onto the wall however you want. Obviously the, the one with the light is fixed, but then it has these other ones that you can put organically around it and create the shape you want. And that was the perfect solution there because with all the paneling and metal inlay, again, everything was very linear and we needed something to break that up. So that was a great way to do that and create a real sense of drama and a focal point into that room. So I'm really excited to share this next idea with you. It's still all about textured art, but it's thinking about outside the box because we don't all have unlimited budget for art. And this was an idea that I've had for a while that I've been desperate to implement. And finally, our client on our portrait wall project said yes. And it was to use sun hats. These are straw hats on the wall. And I loved it for this bedroom because it's their daughter's bedroom. It was a bit playful and it's a holiday home. So it was relevant to the kind of setting of the project. And I think it works so well. So I think when you're thinking about art for your own home, don't feel like you need to buy a painting or you must go and get something from an artist. You can just look around your home and if you have some beautiful plates, for example, it's all about you know having them um, a large enough quantity and how you position them and you can turn anything into art really. So just have a look around your house and think outside the box. I couldn't do this video and talk about textured art without talking about, for me, the person who was really groundbreaking this area who was Fenella Realms. Fenella Realms, incredible artist. She's done so many beautiful pieces that we've used in our projects over the years. I have a piece in my own home. Actually, I have several pieces in my own home. And very sadly, she passed away this year, which was a real loss to her family, to the design industry, to the world. She really was an incredible person, an incredible artist. So I just wanted to share with you some examples of her work that we've used over the years. I'll share with you this first one. Now this is a beautiful piece that I've had in my kitchen for years and it was actually the main reason why I redesigned the lighting in my home because previously you really couldn't appreciate the incredible movement and texture in this piece because the light was just making it look very flat. So when we redesigned the lighting with John Cullen that was one of my main requirements was that I wanted them to really highlight and do justice to all the art and particularly this piece by Fenella which is such a special piece to me. 
We've used her work over the years in so many projects. This one that I wanted to share with you is a piece that she did for our client in Mayfair. When you look at this, at first you don't realise what it is, and then you look a bit closer, it has a metal wiggly line that goes to the middle of it, and that is actually the shape of the Thames that's flowing through the piece. And we thought that was perfect because this home was their London pad and we kind of wanted to echo that back and reinforce that for them because they have multiple homes. Um, and it was just such a nice touch. So that was one of my favorite pieces we commissioned from her. Okay, next trend, you know, this is not a new trend. This has been around for centuries, but it's something that I think is coming back into the design industry, not only in our portfolio, I'm seeing it appear in a lot of other designers' portfolios as well. And I think the reason for it is that we're really having to push ourselves to add more value and create more incredible detail because the whole world is becoming much more educated and knowledgeable about design. If you're a professional designer, you really have to take it up another level. What is it you call it again, Ollie? Step those cookies up. Step those cookies up. And, um, you know, we like to push our boundaries and we like to do things that are really special. So one of the ways that we've embraced doing that is creating beautiful, detailed floors. We're no longer just doing completely plain floors. There's always a place for that. You know, not every project needs this kind of level of detail, but this project in London that we designed with the hallway, we knew we really wanted to emphasize the grandeur. And the flooring is such a great way to do that. Obviously, it's one of the biggest surface areas you have in any room. So here we mixed three different types of marbles. This design we designed on our computers. We went through so many different variations. And if you look at this detail image here, this is the entrance mat. You can see the level of detail we go to here. So you've got the coir matting, which is what you use to wipe your feet on before you come into the house. It's got a metal inlay and bronze that surrounds that. Then you have a cream stone surrounded by a small inset, very dark gray stone. And then you move to the taupe so much level of detail the craftsman that can create this it's all precision perfect it blows my mind i'm so proud of our team to design it and proud of our subcontractors that they're able to implement it it's really um, an amazing level of detail again you can see that flows through to the basement floor and um, where the staircase comes down we wanted to echo that now one of my favorite projects and i don't i'm not allowed to have favorites but this is kind of my favorite at the moment. Please don't actually scrap that, Ollie. Don't do that. Too many clients watch this. Back up, back up. Back up, <laughs> um, So one of my favorite projects we're doing, it's hard to pick favorites. I have so many. We've got some incredible projects we're working on at the moment. But this one's special because it's so different from anything else we've done. And it has a lot of traditional influences and it's very opulent. So the floor in here, this was a grade two listed apartment in Kensington. The floor is completely new and we wanted to create a beautiful Versailles floor in oak. Our client was very particular about the different colors of wood. We went through so many samples. It had to be a really rich um, brown. He loves the color of walnut, but we wanted the, the wood itself to be oak because it's much more sort of classical and what you would have traditionally had in these kind of properties. And that was important to us as well. I mean, the way the light pours in and it picks up the different directions of the wood, it's a masterpiece. Like, Dan, the guy that installed this, he is an artist. It's just perfect. It actually feels too good to walk on. Um, but I think that's a trend that's coming through that we're seeing a lot more interesting flooring. It's not just about the planks. You know, everyone's kind of done the herringbone, but when it comes to this level, it really sort of sets a project apart. We also did a beautiful um, floor with trunk at our masterpiece show, and that was really fun for me to do. Um, a different pattern and sort of push the boundaries because not all of our clients necessarily want to go to this level. It is a bit more um, costly and you know it's not everyone's aesthetic. Some of our clients prefer a sort of more minimalist paired back look but it's something that I think is definitely a trend that's going to become more and more apparent as time goes on. In the same vein of detailed and patterned floors we're also seeing a lot more detail on the ceilings. You know in my own home all the ceilings are plain and when you have a project that you're designing from scratch, you really get to think about all the surfaces. We elevate every single surface, every single wall, every single floor, every single junction. And when it came to the ceiling in this project, there was a lot of access panels we needed. Access panels are the bane of my life. You know, if I could find an air conditioning m &E guy that would give me access panels where I want them, I would lock them in and work with them forever. But inevitably, they end up being in the middle of a ceiling, in the middle of a wall, and then we have to come up with some genius way of disguising them. So Anthony, was the lead designer on this project and his genius idea was to put some plantar molding on the ceiling we had the coffer ceiling already and the molding lines up with the edge of where those access panels are so it kind of hides it it's not 
100%, I would say it's like 98% hidden. But actually, because it's such a beautiful feature to look at, now when you look at the ceiling, you're not like, oh, look at the access panel and look at the smoke detector. You're looking at these beautiful mouldings instead. And I think it's such a nice way to reinterpret what they've been doing in architecture for hundreds and hundreds of years. But I think we've lost some of that craftsmanship. We've lost some of that detail along the way. And I feel like there's a sort of resurgence going back towards that where we're going to embrace these details and really think about where we can add beautiful detail where previously it would have just been plain. Pattern fabric. Now, pattern fabric is something that I've loved for years. Everyone loves a pattern. Well, not everyone loves a pattern, but people are embracing pattern more. You know, it's great to have pattern on your cushions, but I think it's really time that we push it up a level and something that we've been getting braver with doing and I'm seeing other designers are doing and certainly homeowners are doing as well is embracing patterned fabric on your upholstery pieces. So whether that's an armchair or here we've got a dining chair, we've done a pattern on the back of the dining chair and that's such a nice thing to do because if you think about dining chairs, when they're tucked in, you only see the back of the chair and also the back of the chair doesn't get so much wear and tear. You don't need to worry so much about staining and how practical it is. So on these ones, we did a faux leather on the front, so it's wiped clean. And on the back, we've got this beautiful patterned linen. Um, so it really adds some interest into that area, especially because there's not generally in a dining room, there's not that much room for, you know, fabrics and lots of pieces of furniture. The few pieces you do have need to have a lot of detail so it doesn't feel too plain or boring. I love a patterned fabric on a headboard. I just think it's so cool. You know, I've seen it in other designers' portfolios and I was just waiting for a client that was brave enough because we are quite a sort of neutral, you know, understated studio on the whole. Not all of our clients want to embrace clashing patterns, but in this guest bedroom, our client was really happy for us to do that. And I think it works so well. What, you know, headboards can be quite boring, but these are the star of the show in this room. You walk in and it's the first thing you see. So if you can be brave, embrace some pattern on your upholstery, you won't regret it. The next trend we're gonna talk about is bold colored wallpaper. Now this is not for everyone. This is probably only for the brave, but when I have a client that's brave enough to trust us and they go for the bolder color and the two examples I'm gonna share with you, that was certainly the case. It wasn't something that people feel necessarily ready to embrace in their own home. But I think when you have a designer um, supporting you to make those decisions, I know from my own experience in my bedroom, I was umming and ahhing between whether I should go for a taupe chinoiserie wallpaper or um, the burgundy one that I ended up going with. I'm so glad that I was brave. And I always say to my clients, the bravest decisions you make will be your best decisions and the ones that you look back on and think, I'm so glad I did that. I'm so glad I pushed the boundaries and was a little bit braver on that color choice. It's not for everywhere. Um, you don't want to have like, you know, crazy colour everywhere. You need like a different variation throughout your house, but you don't want to have every room in your house neutral because it becomes a bit boring and repetitive and you want each room to have its own identity and colour is a great way of doing that. So looking at this dining room that we did at this London family home we finished last year, we went for a rust colour silk and we'd gone through quite a lot of different options with this client. And we settled on this one because we realized in the end, this was a room that they were gonna use in the evening. It needed to look beautiful by dimmed light. And we love the fact that this rust colored gold and silk wallpaper, it just glows at nighttime. Unfortunately, I don't have a photo of it at nighttime, but you're gonna to have to take my word for that. And there's a few ways to make sure that these bolder colors work well in your, in your interiors and don't become overpowering. You can see here, we've combined it with white trim on the coving on the architrave. I really like that. I think it makes it pop and it feels very crisp. I've done the same thing in my bedroom. Um, and then we've also combined it with lighter color curtains, which I think is quite important because if you have bold colors on bold colors and you don't get it perfect, it can clash. And um, so generally you'll see in all the examples I share, I go for a very neutral curtain and it kind of tones it down. And I think that added a lot of impact into that dining room. It feels like a really sort of inviting, cool, dramatic space to have a dinner party in. This project that is currently um, under construction, we should be completing hopefully late spring, is the same one that I shared with the wooden floor before. Here we've gone for a slightly bolder, even darker red wallpaper. I would still call this rust. It looks insane. I'm gonna share a picture of it with you where you can see the piece of joinery that we've designed. And you can see that we've really taken inspiration from some antique pieces. This particular piece was inspired by the house where they filmed Downton Abbey. Um, and I love the glazed and leaded um, detail on the doors. And I think this is just going to be such a special room. We've really, hopefully, I think we've done justice to this incredible property. Now with the trends, I want to not just do trends that are hard to implement if you're like not renovating your house. This is an easy one that we can all embrace. And I certainly embrace it in my home. 
is cushions of varying sizes. I think for so long, especially in the early 2000s, everyone was all about cushions everywhere. So many cushions in your sofa you can't even sit. I do have a nice space here that I can actually sit. Um, and by having varying sizes of cushions, it just means that you still get to have lots of lovely fabrics, but you're not overpowering the sofa. And I like to have this kind of lower rectangular cushion in front of a square because it kind of tapers down and then you taper down to nothing. So I'm gonna show you some examples from our portfolio where we've also done that. This is the family home in London that we designed. And you can see we've clustered quite a few cushions together in the corner, um, which I just think looks so effective and really layered. I think it just feels a lot more sophisticated than all square cushions in a row. It can feel a little bit like, um, you know, developer circa 2004. This beautiful project in Kensington that we completed is another great example. You can see we've got three square cushions and then we've just done a beautiful little rectangular cushion. That one is from De La Cogna. Um, and I think it just really breaks it up and makes it feel very inviting. We are nearly there guys. We have two more trends left. If you've stuck with me, well done you, because this is a lot to take in, but you don't want to go anywhere because I've got two good ones left. So my penultimate trend that I wanted to talk to you guys about was lime wash paint. If you followed me here for a while, or on Instagram, you'll know that I've embraced lime wash paint in my own home, and I love lime wash paint. It's environmentally friendly, well as environmentally friendly as paint can get. It has a beautiful texture, it's like a very sort of chalky texture, and you get a beautiful patina as the light shines on it, it kind of changes color throughout the day. It's really stressful to pick a color because you, could, it, you don't just slap it on the wall and get a sample, like you have to build it up. It looks very dark at first and then it fades, um, so I went through so many samples when I was doing my own haul with the panelling, but I'm really happy with the colour that we settled on. It, I wanted it to be inspired by my fireplace in this room, so I wanted it to have a kind of lime, uh, limestone colour, and I think we've definitely achieved that. And I think it just adds an air of sophistication. It feels very sort of like weathered, almost like it's been there for like 20 years and untouched, and that was the feeling that I wanted. In this living room that we designed in Kensington, we also use lime wash paint. This picture doesn't really show the full texture of it, but it was the only image that I could find. But when you're there in person, as the light changes throughout the day, you get these beautiful, beautiful patterns on the wall. Now, the only thing I would say about lime wash, because I always want to be honest with you guys, um, I don't know how practical it is. I mean, in my entrance hall, it was only until after the decorator had finished installing it, he was like, now, don't touch the walls. And if you mark it, don't wash it. I'm like, why are you telling me this now? I've got two young kids, that's what they do all the time. Um, they've been pretty good. And generally I have furniture that kind of surrounds the walls. I do think over time, like I am gonna see some fingerprints and I think I can live with that myself, but just bear that in mind if you've got OCD and you don't wanna see any marks on your wall, if it's a high traffic area, maybe avoid the lime wash paint. Have you found it practical, Ollie? I haven't, no. <laughs> okay. I, I keep a sample pot at the ready, let's just say Yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, okay, well that's a good tip. I do not have time to be sample potting everywhere. <laughs> Always touching it up. Yeah, I'm just gonna live with the imperfection. Like I'm telling myself, I wanted it to look old and sort of worn and lived in. Well, that's what I've got. It looks, you know, it's not perfect, perfect, it's but I'm fine with that. It, I love it, I love it. Now, when I was in Paris, and I've had this feeling for myself for a while, is that I'm really sick of those thick pile rugs. Again, they feel a little bit like obvious luxury, and I like understated luxury. Something that almost feels a bit vintage. I prefer now a very thin pile rug. And um, so I'm gonna share with you some videos, the flashback from our Paris trip. This is a beautiful rug that we saw there and it had so much lovely detail, but it was also very thin. I think I also like the thin rugs as well, because when it comes to like furniture placement, if it doesn't all fit on the rug, like here, my sofa, the back two legs are off the rug, the front two are on. If you had a very thick pile, the piece of furniture would wobble. But here where I have this sisal rug, this one's very affordable, it's from Crucial Trading. You don't need to worry about that so much. And I just think it feels a lot more sophisticated. And then this last example that I wanted to share with you, actually I've got two examples. This one is the runner that we did on the staircase in our family home project in London. Again, I think if you're doing a runner on a staircase, you don't wanna go for a thick pile um, carpet because it makes the tread of the step much shorter and it feels a bit clunky and chunky, especially when you see it from the edge, it doesn't fold quite as neatly. So this was a beautiful carpet. I think this one's by Tim Page um, that we did and I absolutely love it. I loved it so much. I showed pictures of it to my husband being like, please can we put a runner on our staircase? Um, but he was not on board and you know, this is a democracy. I listen to other people, so um, we have no runner. And then this example was just the entrance hall in Portugal. And again, these are very practical. You know, this is a beach property. They're gonna come back with sand. And if you're trying to hoover sand out of a deep pile rug, it's not gonna work. So we went for very thin 
um, woolen rugs in the entrance hall and I think they look really cool and much more contemporary. Okay guys, that is a wrap on our 2023 trends video. I absolutely love sharing all these trends with you guys. Don't forget, you don't have to embrace all trends. The most important thing is that you love what's in your own home. If you'd like more regular updates from us, don't forget you can also follow us on TikTok at Sophie Patterson Interiors, on Instagram at Sophie Patterson Interiors. And if you haven't subscribed, please make our day and hit that subscribe button and we'll see you very soon.